Boatworks today is sponsored by Total Boat and Alexia Yacht Coatings, as well as supported by the generosity from the beautiful folks over on Patreon. Thank you so much. So welcome back everybody. Hope you're having a most fantastic weekend. My name is Andy with Boatworks today and this week we're continuing on with the fairing process on this little red sailboat to get it ready for painting, specifically with Alexial Yacht Coatings topside paint. So last week we finished the initial sanding on this fairing compound, which uh, we used the Total Boat Total Fair on this and long boarded it out. Now while I understand it, you know, at right here, it looks pretty good. I can guarantee you that it is not where it needs to be. I will bet money that there are, th there's blemishes all, th you know, throughout the, this hull here, whether they're low spots or just edges that didn't quite feather off or, or pinholes, you know, whatever it may happen to be. Things that you're not going to want in your finished paint product. Now, in order to make this easier to kind of find these, uh, these blemishes, I'm going to turn this entire hull a uniform color because right now, it's just such a hodgepodge of colors. It's really, really difficult to see any, any, any of the blemishes that are going on in here. So I'm going to be going over top of this with the Alexial. It's their 442. It's their finished primer. And I, I'm sure this is going to be a question that's going to come up. Um, why am I using a finished primer when I could be using, say, like a high build primer, which would give me a little bit extra meat to help with the, with the fairing process? Well, the point of this demo that we're doing here is to uh, go through and, and play around with a rolling additive. Now, when you start talking about some of your high build primers, those are mainly for spray application only because they're, they're a, a thicker consistency. They just, they don't roll out real well. Now, the 442, that rolls out beautifully. So that's what we're going to be using on here. And initially, I'm just going to do one coat just to turn it white. And then from there, we're going to have to continue on with a little bit more of the fairing process and, and filling and just kind of addressing some of the blemishes that we're going to find. Now, the 442 primer gets mixed at a one to one ratio, meaning we're going to do equal parts of the base to the converter. And then after that's mixed up, then since we're going to be rolling this on, I'm going to be using their uh, brushing reducer to, uh, to thin this out a little bit so it rolls out uh, a little bit more smoothly. Now, I think just as an initial uh, mix up here, I think I'm going to do eight ounces of each. So eight and then eight. So that'll give me 16. And then if I wanted to, I could, I could add up to four ounces of the, uh, uh, the brushing reducer. I think I'm going to go just shy in that, probably between three and four ounces. And when you're pouring this out, now once you start getting into the paint and the priming process, uh, you, you want to run all of your solvents or all, all of your uh, mixes through a strainer. Just in case there's any little clumps, uh, you know, that, uh, that are hiding somewhere in the can. All right, we've got eight ounces of the base mix or poured up. Get that out of the way. And then now another eight ounces of this converter. But I'm going to put some gloves on for this one. And also I should mention, uh, anytime you're working with two-part paint, uh, the stuff has a pretty strong smell. Uh, typically I would be wearing a respirator and I would strongly encourage you to do, uh, do so as well anytime you're working with this. Uh, but it's kind of hard to talk over a respirator. So that's the only reason I'm not wearing one right now, but uh, normally I would be, because this stuff is a little potent. <laughs> So let's see, I'm up to about 17 ounces of, uh, before I mix it, it's 25. I think I'm going to go just under 4 ounces. So 18, about 21 ounces. 21 total mixed ounces. So I'm adding just uh, between 3 and 4 ounces. And I'm going to stir this for probably 2 or 3 minutes. I'm going to scrape the sides, scrape the bottom. I want to make sure that the base is thoroughly mixed in with the converter and the reducer. Now the roller I'm going to be using for applying this, it's these little 4 inch mohair rollers. You've seen me use these before. Uh, if you want to check it out, I'll have a link down below in the description. But for the most part, it's going to be, this is all thoroughly mixed. It's been sitting now, I, I don't think the 442 requires what's called an induction time. Um, but it's been sitting for about 15 minutes while I did the wipe down on the boat. And we should be good to go. I'm just going to pour out a little bit at a time. And then when you're not using it, just take it, put a paper, paper towel over top of it, just to help slow down uh, how the evaporation of the, of the uh, reducer in there.
So last night when I was mixing up the primer, I did a total batch of, it was just under 20 ounces, like 19, between 19 and 20 ounces. And when I was rolling it out, I used every drop of that uh, to coat this hole with one coat. And overall, everything turned out very, very nice. And surprisingly, well, maybe not surprisingly, there were no pinholes anywhere. I've mentioned this many, many times before, but that's one of the main reasons that I really, really like that total fare. Uh, it's not to say that there aren't blemishes, because there are. And I've come in and I've, I've circled them. I don't know if they're going to pick up on camera. But I've circled some areas where there are some blemishes. And primarily, these were just areas that I, just, I wasn't able to see to sand out uh, before I made everything somewhat of a uniform color. Now, I had this initial priming step been skipped. Uh, well, I wouldn't be very happy because there would be enough blemishes on here where it would have made me pull my hair out. But uh, any event, uh, right, the, the, the fix for this is going to be pretty simple. Uh, we're going to come in with some more fairing compound, but not the fairing compound that you're probably thinking I'm going to be using. So there's this little not so well known thing or stipulation uh, when, you, when we start talking about painting. And just as a real quick hypothetical to kind of make a point here. Now let's just say you went through and you painted your boat and within a season or two you all of a sudden you start to notice well there's there's some blistering or some bubbling or something going on and you call up the manufacturer and you say well what the heck's going on i can guarantee you one of the first things they're going to ask you is how did you do the prep and what materials did you use now unless you're able to answer i used your products every step of the way start to finish you're not going to have a leg to stand on because what they're going to say is, if you look through our application guide, we specifically spell out you're supposed to use this, this, or this for the fairing or for the priming or whatever st you know, step you may happen to be during the finishing process. If you deviate from what they have outlined in that guide, you pretty much shot yourself in the foot as far as trying to get any kind of, uh, basically having them help you fix the problem. <laughs> so. So because of that, now we, last night when I laid down the primer on here, now because I laid down that uh, 442 primer, I've switched over to the Alexial yard, I guess. And going forward then, I want to be using a, a fairing compound that is made by Alexial just for that reason, uh, because I, I know it's going to be one, guaranteed compatibility. And if there are any issues, which I don't, even if I were to use total fare, to be perfectly honest, I don't think there would be a problem. But consider that like a, a belt and suspenders kind of an approach. Why take that chance? So once you kind of cross over into the, the finishing stages and you've laid down that first quarter primer, you've switched over to the Alexio product line. So because of that, I'm going to be using the uh, two, or it's a 212. Yeah, it's a 212 fairing compound. And that's what I'm going to be using for filling the, uh, all the, the little pits in, in uh, um, little you know, surface defects that I wasn't able to find and sand out initially. Now, just like the Total Fair, this, uh, the Alexil 212 primer, primer, why do I always call it a primer? <laughs> this fairing compound, it gets mixed at a one-to-one -one ratio. So, let me get some of this pulled out here. Now, I am not going to need very much here, because, well, there just isn't a whole lot that needs to get uh, filled. So this is probably going to be plenty. And I don't think this needs to be super accurate. Just like Total Fair, if you can eyeball it and it looks pretty close, that's probably close enough. The area I'm going to be looking at focusing at is right in here. It's just uh, low spots. I just I didn't see to, to sand them out. And there's some other little, little uboos up in here. Now for doing something like this, because this is on a, a, a crowned surface, using one of these little plastic um, spatula things where you can kind of bend it to shape, it's going to make life a lot easier than trying to use like a rigid blade uh, metal one. And again, remember, I'm not looking really to get any kind of a build here. I just want to fill in these low spots and imperfections. So I'm scraping this pretty clean. All right, so I got all these little touch-ups done. I'll just give you a quick little walk around here. Let you know uh, how few spots actually I had to hit. I am officially at a standstill for the rest of today, so uh, jump in on emails and I will see you again first thing tomorrow morning.
Well, the sanding is just about done. It's not quite. I, I've still got more to do, uh, primarily because uh, it's been more than 24 hours since I laid up the, the first coat of primer on here. And once you get past that 24-hour window, well, then you have to sand it just to key the surface enough so that any additional coatings, whether it's you know, more primer or the, or the paint, whatever it may happen to be, the surface will still need to be, uh, I guess, sanded and keyed. Now, for doing this, I'm going to be using a, uh, just a, a regular random orbit sander. And as long as I don't uh, hold the sander in one place, as long as I keep it constantly moving, I shouldn't change the surface profile on here. I shouldn't create any, any wobbles or dips or gouges or anything. Fingers crossed. So I'm going to be using 180 grit. And Alexiel recommends, they, they, in their guide, they say rec they recommend either 120 or 150. And something I've learned kind of over time is that not all brands, uh, you know, sandpaper, they're not all created equal. So for example, like one brand of 220 might be more or less coarse than another brand of 220. And Festool tends to be a little bit more on the, uh, like, is it aggressive side? Yeah, more on the aggressive side. <laughs> so their 180 is probably going to be closer to, say, like uh, what other, most other brands would be, like, say, at 150. So I'm going to give this a quick one over, again, using the DA and 180 grip, and then give it a quick wipe down, and then we're going to mix up some more primer. So I mixed up another batch of the 442 uh, primer here, and I, I didn't bother recording it because it's honestly it's exactly what I showed the first time, but I did make two small changes. Uh, I'm mixing up a little bit more than what I did last time, so I, I mixed up 22 ounces versus 18, 17, 18, give or take, and uh, so basically that came down to 10 ounces of the base, 10 ounces of the uh, converter, and then I put in two ounces of the reducer, which is different than what I did last time. So. This is going to be a little bit thicker batch, but I still think there's enough reducer in here where it's going to still roll out fine. Right now, I'm trying to get a little bit of build. I mean, you're not going to get a whole lot with this, uh, with this particular primer, but I want to try to get a little bit. Um, just see how it goes. I mean, if I, if I start rolling it and it looks like crap, well, then I'll, I'll, I'll uh, give another little splash of uh, reducer and kind of bring it to where it needs to be. But I think this is going to work out just fine. So uh, let me get things set up. Um, yeah, primer's ready to go. Everything's set. Let's just do this. Well, good morning and happy Friday for everybody over on Patreon. Uh, YouTube will be seeing this on Sunday morning. Uh, after I got the first coat of primer put down last night, I, I checked out and came in this morning. And because I was still within that 24 hour window, I just mixed up another batch of uh, the 442 primer and rolled it out. Now, if I had gone over that 24 hour mark, well, then I'd have to sand, but timing is everything. <laughs> and I gotta say, she's looking pretty sexy.
So I'll give you a quick little peek on uh, how everything are, is looking right now. Again, this is with two coats of primer. This is after all the sanding and fairing that we have done. And right now, I gotta say, I think, I think, I think, I think, she's ready. So if all goes well, uh, next weekend then, be doing the final sanding, uh, basically with uh, like 400 grit. They, Alexiel recommends 320. Uh, again, because I'm going to be using Festool paper, I usually go up one more grit. So I'm going to be sanding this down with 400 grit. And I'm also going to be using what's called a guide coat. And essentially what that's going to do is it's going to help me see any little dimples, any imperfections that are, uh, that's in the surface. So um, keep an eye out for that one. And also as far as the color, uh, now a few videos ago, I put out a, uh, basically a, a question saying, what color do you want to see? And I think I had like four or five different colors. And the, uh, the, basically everybody was split between two, uh, two colors. One was the Fighting Lady Yellow, and the other one was, uh, what is it, a Royal Blue or something like that? So, because they were so evenly split, split I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one half yellow, and it's going to be the funkiest ass looking boat you've ever seen, but the other half blue. <laughs> Just because, remember, this is a guinea pig boat. Uh, this thing will probably never see water. And uh, this is, you know, is kind of where I get to have a little bit of fun. So I think that's the direction I'm leaning. If you have uh, one you know, uh, inclination one way or the other, please let me know and down in the comments. Uh, but until then, uh, this is Friday morning. I think this is going to be a good place to end this week. So as always, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, please hit that thumbs up button. If you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button and notification bell. Thank you in advance. I really appreciate that. If you have any questions, comments, uh, feel free to leave those down below. I'll do my best to get back with you. And as always, thank you for your time. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week. This has been a Boatworks Today Protection.